Welcome everybody. Come on in. It's it's um it's tea time, and I have Samantha here. For some reason, she is loving coming in here for tea time. I don't know what's gotten into her. Yeah, you get in here. She's complaining now because there's no sunbeam. Just absolutely no sunbeam. And I got um, an owie. I'm going to grab a little sponge. There you have it. A little concealer and we're good to go. We're good to go. So come on in, folks. We got a few people in here. Samantha is, is crying. I don't know why she she is meowing. She is meowing. Samantha wants to be the star of the show. Well, come here. You want to be the star? I'll pick you up. She does not like to be picked up. At night, though, she's been letting me pick her up and put her in the chair. So, I got a cup of cafe mocha. Sometimes you just need some hot chocolate with coffee. Mmm. Oh, that is good. I put enough stuff in it tonight, to, this afternoon. Samantha, get up in the window and I'll show all the ladies your picture. So happy birthday to Davidson. I think that's what his name was. Yes, Mr. Davidson's five years old today. Oh, to be five again. I don't remember being five. I always remember being being grown. I don't remember being five. I remember being two. <laughs> But I don't remember being five. I remember being on a train going to California. Patty was a baby. I was a baby. It's 14 months difference between me and Patty. And I was born in 1956. And my sister Leanne was born in 1959. So somewhere I was between... Two and three. So I was two two years old in a few months being remember being on that train. And I don't remember Patty being on the train. But I remember when when Leanne was born, Mama put her in our baby bed, our doll bed. And I told Patty, you grab her feet, I'll grab her hands, and we'll get her out of our doll bed. It's a good thing we weren't very far from the ground. Because we dropped her. God rest her soul. She Kim got day one of the Bible reading. Isn't Genesis wonderful? We're doing 40 chapters every day. In, in our Bible reading. And it is wonderful. And you learn something new every time. Every time you learn something new. I gotta. What? That's not true. Why are you telling stories? Come here. Come and talk to me. Would y'all say a prayer for Patera? Her prize Nubian buck goat got sick yesterday, and she doesn't know what's wrong with him, but she's she's dosed him up with all the medication she knows to give him, and he's doing better. He's doing, but he was down yesterday. Today he's up and drinking and and doing stuff. Stuff hits goats. I'm telling you, I had a had a baby goat to die once upon a time, and it broke my heart. 
I never got any more goats. I ordered some olive oil from TJ. I can't wait to get some. Oh, it's, you're going to love it. You are going to love it. I put the link in yesterday's tea time for anybody that wanted to check it out. Anyway, God is good. Robert's down downstairs doing taxes. And it's not a fun situation when he does taxes. He does not like to do income taxes. He can do them. I can do them. But it is not fun. Justin said he had sleet at his house this morning. We didn't have any sleet that I heard. But it's been raining pretty good all day. Samantha. Kitty, 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 kitty. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Come here. She won't. I got to let her out. You want to go out? Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Come on. Look at you. Look who I got. Look at there. Look at you on TV. Okay, I'm going to let you out. Hold it just a second. Hold it. Hold it. Hold on. Here you go. Y'all, that's like taking your life in your own hands. She does not like to be picked up. Let me find my microphone. Her face from us. Yeah. She dug her hand in her head into my elbow. Now I'm covered in cat hair. But she's happy now. She is out the door. Probably sitting in my seat. We've had 34 degrees. I got a fire going, so I can't stay in here very long. I've got a fire going in the living room. Robert's got a fire going in the basement because he doesn't have any heat in the basement. And no heat in the basement makes for cold office. I'm looking at your comments. Y'all, doing your routines keeps your house clean all the time. You don't have to wait till the weekend to get your house clean. You don't have to play catch up on the weekend. It's not fun to play catch up, y'all. It means you're always behind. Samantha is 16 years old. But she's never been an outside kitty. She's one time she got off the back deck and down the stairs. Penrod took her out into the woods and she got lost. She got lost and she wasn't 30 feet from the house and she couldn't get back to the house. And Robert found her and she was underneath a rhododendron and he took her water and food out there and finally. He was able to catch her and bring her back in the house. And the most she's ever done is get out on the back deck. She doesn't go down the steps. She was one of, 
She was a, a one, the only cat that survived her litter that got eaten by a hawk. And she hid under a porch. Wow. My little podcaster that I like used to be a heavyweight champion boxer. He rescued a cat a few months ago. And this cat was on the highway. It was on a busy city highway. And it was pouring down rain. And it was cu cur curled up. And cars were running over the top of it and it would get it got to the edge and finally Nino just stopped his truck scooped down and got this cat and he he sent us a picture of the kitty in the floorboard of his truck and he rescued this kitty and this kitty loves him and this kitty bit him and you know it's a feral kitten and he has he nursed it back to health. It was just little. He could put it in his hand. That's how big Samantha was when we got her. And he said, you know, I've never, never had a cat. I didn't know the personality of cats. But cats are in charge. <laughs> yeah. I'd never been around a cat either. But I don't think Robert would have married me if his cat didn't like me. Same way with me. I, I wouldn't have married Robert if my dog hadn't liked him. But Nino named this cute little um, orange and white cat Striker because he was just a fighter from the beginning. And I think that's why Nino lo loves him so much. And Striker's going to help Nino get over his dog, his pit bull, is 10, 11 years old, and and he's about, he's on his last leg, and it's just breaking Nino's heart. So pray for Nino. He's been sober for four years and two months, and he said his dog helped him get through a lot of things. So for me, whenever you lose a pet, you need a little time to mourn, but then you just got to get another kitty or another dog. You can't just languish not wanting to get another critter because you're afraid you're going to get hurt. Critters need love, y'all. They need to be loved, and you need to give love. My sister Dina has an orange cat, who's one of many orange cats that she's had over the years. And this one was named, they've all been named Charlie. And whenever Dina's sick, this cat gets up and, and just lays on her head, lays on her shoulder. If her shoulder's hurting, the cat's on her shoulder. It's just a good kitty. He knows how to he knows how to love on people. There was a cat in a nursing home that would evidently the Holy Spirit just sort of said, you know, this person needs you right now because they're coming home. And this cat, they started watching this cat and this cat would predict who was going to pass next because it would it would adopt this person so i think that's kind of beautiful that critters know critters know critters know and amanda grace got a new horse at her sanctuary his name is prince and he's 31 years old 
So she gives critters a, a home to live out their last days. One of her last cats she adopted, his name is Bruce. And he was, he couldn't get adopted by the shelter. They were about ready to put this cat down. And Amanda said, because it was a feral cat and it wouldn't associate, it was just miserable. Brought the cat home to all the other cats and he has finally adjusted. Bruce has adjusted. Yeah, all critters are good for us, y'all. It gives us something to get up and have to take care of. It gives us something to love on and to love on us. Our pets, our family, yep. I remember my first dog when I moved up here to North Carolina. Somebody asked me to, to babysit their dog, Lucy. And they were going on a vacation and they didn't have anybody to keep her. And so I said, I'll keep her and... She never went home again. She became my dog and she protected my cabin and she would run circles around the cabin and she would go camping with me and run circles around the camp. She, she was my protector. I loved that puppy. She was a blue tick hound dog. She was an amazing, amazing creature. Justin had a dog named Ranger and Ranger Saved my life one time. I mean, and saved the life of a little girl that lived across the street. Ranger was, he loved everybody. But one one morning, bright and early, this guy came in the, the shop down in Alabama when I lived in Alabama and came in the shop and that dog, every hair stood up on the back of his neck. And I, that was my warning. Something in right. Something in right. And I looked at that man. I said, I don't know what you're about to do. But that dog doesn't like you. And if you don't get out of here, he's going to take your neck out. That man hit the door running and the dog right after him. And that dog, Ranger was just a Labrador mix. And that dog stayed between him and the, the shop, the store, stayed right between him until I could get some people there. And another time that dog, there was a, another dog around and it was going to get a little girl that lived in the trailer across the street. And this little girl was out playing and it was a pit bull that was going after this little girl. And that, that ranger, that he wasn't a big dog. He hit that dog running. I mean, hit him and knocked him down this embankment to keep him from going after that baby. So folks, our critters are sent into our lives. They have special, special features. I know one time we rescued a dog from the barbecue place. And this was a huge dog. I mean, it was like a Catahoula leopard dog and a Mastiff mixed. And we had her DNA tested. I forget what it was. But she was skin and bones. She was skin and bones. And we finally got her in the car. And she had been abandoned in the forest. And she had lost so much weight. And we went to get her. Went to get. It was about this time of the year. It was spitting snow. It was like March the 15th. I don't remember what year. And it was spitting snow. And, and uh, somebody whistled. And she jumped right up in the car. I had a little red Subaru back then. She jumped right up in the car. We had bought 
ribs and all kinds of stuff to try to barbecue to try to get her to eat. Robert was taking crackers out to her. And so we got her home and I took her to the vet the next day because I needed, you know, we needed to get her fixed and we couldn't get her fixed for three weeks. We had to put things in the paper to try to find her owner. She hadn't been chipped. And she, so in three weeks we were able, and, and y'all named her my angel dog. And, and she was just, she was beautiful and sweet. And she taught me, be careful what you wish for. Because one day she was walking around in the house and she had a big tail. And she just wagged her tail and knocked things off the table. And I said, Shadow, I wish you wouldn't, knock, wouldn't knock things off the table. Next thing I know, her tail didn't work. So I'd take her back to the vet. And her tail wouldn't work. And finally, I was I told Robert what I had done, that I had wished that that dog's tail didn't work. And so I started looking for chiropractors for dogs. And I couldn't find any. You know, we live in close to Asheville, and Asheville's full of a lot of strange people. But I couldn't find a chiropractor for a dog. So we are we had two dogs show up to the house, stray dogs, Labrador mix type things. And they were chasing Shadow. And Shadow's tail was hanging straight down. And she was going to have to have it amputated because it was getting in the way of her, her doing bodily functions. And finally Shadow came up and stood beside me on the porch. And I had my walking stick trying to, the dogs were, were chasing and they were crazy. And Shadow came up and stood beside me. This other dog came up and got on top of her and jumped on her. And I heard her back pop. I heard it because it's right beside me. And you know, her tail started working. She had a chiropractic adjustment from another dog. <laughs> But when we finally got her, when we got her fixed, I went to see Dr. Brooks. And Dr. Brooks' office was right across from our high school. And when I went to pick her up, he said, Marla, I, I wasn't able to fix her. He said, I laid her out on, and she's a big, she's a big dog. She gained weight since we got her. And, and, um, uh, he said, I laid her whole insides out on the table and there were no, I have never seen this in all my years of being a vet. There were not any reproductive organs. There wasn't even a stump of a uterus. There was nothing there. And he said, I've never seen this before. And I started crying because all my ladies called her an angel dog that God had sent her to us and she was our angel dog. And I started telling Dr. Brooks about it, that Shadow was an angel dog and angels don't have reproductive organs. <laughs> and we cried together, but she was our dog for a long time and we loved her and she was big. She was big. So y'all, don't give up on loving another critter. Taking care of something, it's good for us to have critters. Now you don't want to have 60 cats, but you can have two or three. We've had two cats at one time. Got them both at the same time. So y'all be good, kind, and sweet. Thank the Lord for the critters in your life. Whether they're wild, like today, it's been raining all day. Robert put some peanuts out for the for the 
crows and they seemed happy to be able to get to get their peanuts and we've got a cardinal and sometimes we have some pigeons that show up and we have lots of woodpeckers lots of woodpeckers I'm hearing a bird right now. I don't know where it is, but I hear it. We've got pileated woodpeckers. They're huge. We've named them Thelma and Louie. The male, they mate for life. We've got a hawk. we got crows. We've had 200 vultures surrounding our house, too. Black vultures, which was amazing. Because they don't usually roost like that. We have all our trees around. It could have been a bad omen, but I don't believe in omens. I just think God was having them protect us. Anyway, y'all be good, kind, and sweet. I haven't heard from Gig yet. You should hear Amanda Grace talk about how a duck, feeding the duck, saved her life. That God told her to feed the ducks. Feed the ducks. And she would have to, she, she had been in a wheelchair. And she was on a walker and a cane. And she would have to walk down to the pond to feed the ducks. Yes, Jennifer, we can pray. Dear Father in Heaven, thank you for all the, the sweet animals you have put in our lives. Thank you for the love that they show us, the love that is, is unconditional love. Thank you, Lord, for our compassion for them, for taking care of them. Thank you for those babies. Those, those little furry babies that we love and adore. That our love can shine through us from you to these critters. These critters that touch our hearts and keep us connected to you, Lord. Thank you so much. Help us to be good shepherds of our critters. And good shepherds to the people we love. Help us to guide them. Help us to show them the right way to go. We may not be able to change their life. But we can show them by our example. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much for being you for loving us so much that you sent your son to die for us help us to be ready to preach the gospel anytime all the time thank you lord all these things we ask in your son's holy name the name of jesus so powerful in jesus name we pray amen and amen Y'all be ready. Even be ready in the middle of the night. You never know. You can go back and listen to Tea Time. I love you all. I will see you later. Bye.